Yo, what's up, my white gloved ketchup eaters? How you doing today? It's SJB here, and I've got a really weird strategy for you guys. We're on Impoppable right now, so we've got a full 100 rounds we've got to take down. We can make a little extra money for ourselves, but I wanted to talk to you guys about the Absolute Zero. This is one of those towers that I never, ever, ever use, but it got a huge buff in the most recent update. Its price went from 26000 down to $20,000. That's one of the most drastic changes Nijikiwi has ever made for a single tower. On top of that, they made Snowstorm even more powerful, so how could we possibly deny using this guy? Or at least, testing him out. But when I heard about this strategy that involves combining the Absolute Zero and the Glue Storm, I just had to check it out. So what's difficult about a Spice Islands is that it's actually really difficult to make money, right? I mean, we get one spot for a banana farm here, and I think we can fit one banana farm here if we really, really try hard. But we really got to get some popping power going very quickly in here. So we want to pop down our hero as fast as possible. Today I decided to go for Etienne. No, he's not beastly or anything like that, but he's a pretty decent tower in his own regard. Uh, he can, he can keep up the game right here, so we're gonna throw him down, and I'm just gonna put him right next to my other trifecta of towers so far. So Glue is a really, really hard tower to use in Blue Star Defense 6. It was, like, ridiculously overpowered in BTD5, and even in, in battles for a little while, it was pretty OP, but it's hard to use right now. It, there's just no easy way to say, hey, heck yeah, I definitely want to use the Glue in this way, but... I think the best way we're going to use him today is just with a simple little bigger globs right here, and we're going to go for a glue soak and a corrosive glue. All that's going to do is mean that we've got corrosive glue here. we got them on strong, so at least we're going to slow them down. And then they're also going to glob, so it's going to go through two balloons instead of just one over here. Getting that to actually go down is not as easy as it seems, but at the very least, we can try to glob multiple layers here. In addition, it'll actually pop lead balloons. So if all goes according to plan, we can pop lead balloons with this corrosive glue too, which helps us out a bunch. It's kind of a weird tower to go for lead popping power, but it actually does work really, really well. So uh, definite weaknesses for glue here. Early game, lots of group balloons. There's weird rounds where he's just like not an efficient tower at all, specifically round 27 here. But luckily our other towers are kind of kind of clean these guys up. So let's use Etienne here, clean these guys up. Get our lead popping power with this guy, and we're going to try to farm a little bit further here with our Benete farm. Here we go. Absolutely beautiful so far. <laughs> Look at this farm. He's got camo detection. What's going on? I mean, that's cool, I guess. I just never noticed that or just never thought about it, really. Camo detecting farms. What would be the purpose of that? I would love to see some exploding bananas just flop out onto the screen here and blow some crap up, man. That would be a great upgrade for Banana Farm to have. Sadly, that's just in my dreams, guys. Ninja Kiwi's never going to be that cool unless the fifth tier Banana Farm is exactly as overpoweredly amazing as I want it to be. All right, so the first Moab's coming out right now on round 40. We're going to pop down our drones nice and early here to get as much pop power as we can out of them. We're going to see if this Razor Rotors, if I can control him. Ooh, let's get faster firing here. Uh, yes. Oh, okay, beautiful. We got that glue action going on. Let's put him back on pursuit so I don't need to worry about him anymore. So we can pick up our nanners for a while here, guys. Looking delish. All right, guys. So right now, my towers don't really meld well together. I'll be honest. Getting ice and glue to work together with your other towers is a little bit difficult. You actually have to pick specific towers that are like, yeah, that'll totally work. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to farm just a tiny bit more, and then we're going to start to upgrade our middle path ice tower. We're going to show you guys the cool aspects of this guy. So for sure, Enhanced Freeze is probably one of the cheapest slash best upgrades in the entire game that you can get. Uh, there's just like certain upgrades that you just like cannot deny yourself on certain towers. Enhanced Freeze is one of those that just makes him delicious. Like Deep Freeze, I could go with that. It doesn't really matter too much to me. Arctic Wind, another great upgrade here if we've got other towers to work well with each other. So we're going to go for that Arctic Wind. And then the tower that I really want to talk about, though, is this Snowstorm. This is going to be a huge increase in the amount of power that we got right here. And we can work out some really cool things if we get this guy to work right. So here we go. We get a Snowstorm. We're going to go for the larger radius. This is kind of sucktastic because I would honestly love to have a permafrost. It's, like, really, really cool to have a permafrost. But I'll be honest, it's better to get a larger radius because that allows us to do something really ridiculous here with our village. Now, don't forget, third tier and fourth tier ice towers allow you to freeze the water around you. And then it allows you to put towers around you that you normally would not be able to, uh, like land towers on the water. And it does not matter what tower it is, it could be something as weird as a village. 
So now we have a village supporting my ice tower, which I can use to then do something as crazy as get primary training on him to make his range even bigger. And power up my glue gunner. Freaking sweet, baby. So what's awesome about this fourth tier here in particular is that we have this ability. Okay, now the ability uh, got raised from... Four seconds up to six seconds total lasting time here, which may not seem like much, but I want to actually use it on round 49 here in conjunction with our slowdown of our already existing towers here and just kind of see what's going on. First of all, it does that freeze. Second of all, you can still pop things while they're in the range here, especially if they're glued or whatnot. They still get popped from the glue. And you can use weird towers that, like, explode or just do regular damage here. Even our towers that normally would not be able to pop these balloons are popping them fairly easily. I'm actually pretty surprised how this is all going down. I'm very happy. That's all I can say. So let's make sure that our other towers are going to work really well with the towers that I already have. So I want to get that glue hose. Now, every balloon that's coming in here that's not pop that's not a Moab, of course, the mode pops out, is going to get glue. All right, it's, it's pretty much a guarantee. Not 100%, but like pretty much a guarantee at this point. In addition to that, I'm going to get my hot shot on this guy. I'm going to get a hot shot on this guy. We're going to get another Merchant Man's Week make at least a little bit of extra cash up in here. I've got the Razor Rotors already, which does do uh, lead and frozen balloons. So right now, we don't really have that many weaknesses besides our crappy dart monkey here, which we can fix by going with a ridiculous... Oh, crap. Oh, crap. Watch out, freeze him! There we go. <laughs> Beautiful. Look at that. That freezes forever, man. That's awesome. Um, which we can go for a... I forgot what I was getting already. Oh, let's go for a Juggernaut. Oh, it seems like such a weird tower. But in this situation, I really do feel like it's actually going to be worthwhile. All right, this seems like a really weird tower that I almost never use, but it's actually being pretty good right now. The Sniper. We've got a deadly precision shrapnel shot here because I don't have that much Moab popping power. My glue and my ice both don't kill Moabs. My Juggernaut does not kill Moabs. I'm relying on Etienne, a few boats, and my Helipel that's kind of okay against everything here at Pop Moabs. But no longer will that be the case. Now we've got a main mob that just slows down, hopefully, all the Moabs on the screen into a gigantic bundle right as soon as they walk in here. They pop, we glue them, and then we freeze them. And this is a ridiculous strategy that I think is going to work for us probably all the way up until round 63, if not, or not 63, 80, if not further. All right, round 63 is just definitely a good test for us. Will our strategy still survive a gigantic group rush? Mm, it's going okay. I am fairly happy with that. Uh, in fact, that's going to allow us to get a fourth-tier banana farm already. Sexy. And I'm not even using my abilities right now, like this guy or this guy, just to blow them all up as soon as they walk in here. Things are quite, quite beautiful at this point in the game. I am happy with my strategy, which is something I don't often say. All right, guys, I'm definitely starting to run into some issues with my ability to pop the Moabs. With my current strategy, popping Moabs is most definitely difficult. And my kind of weird issue at this point is that I don't really have that many towers that will specifically, no matter what, just hit the Moabs. You know, I mean, there's a lot of towers that'll, like, kind of hit the Moabs a little bit, but kind of do other things. But I think my best bet for right now is since I have, hopefully, the room here, and I will, I believe, have the range to get this guy, we're going to go for a top path arcane spike. We're going to put him on strong here. Just hit the Moabs, and we're going to get that intense magic. Uh, just have intense magic. And then what I'll do is I do want to, sadly, alchemize this guy. I haven't used any alchemize, uh, alchemists at all today. But I do believe this is going to matter a lot for our Arcade Spike. He really is just a power-hungry powerhouse here. And I got to say, again, I'm very happy with this strategy so far. And I'm ready to make some real interesting plays right now. All right, now is as uh, interesting a time of any. Get that glue strike. Now we can both freeze and glue strike things like round 76, which are one of those weird rounds that, like, normally aren't that big of a deal. But, like, randomly they could be somewhat of a problem. Uh, and one other issue that I'm kind of having is this game is a little bit slower than usual. Maybe that's why I don't like to play it. My ice tower is taking more time to pop the balloons. Uh, and all that junk. So here we go. Let's glue it all. Let's freeze it all. And holy crap, we made quick work of 76. Well, I shouldn't say quick work. Easy work of round 76. Still not exactly quick there. But we're, we're going along strong. All right, here we go, guys. It's time. I have the money. I have the abilities. Let's do two things. Let's get the primary mentoring first. Let's get the... Well, I could have gone for a bottom hat. That would be cool. But let's get the absolute zero. And look at the range on that guy. Oh, my God. That's insanity. 
Is he alchemized too? I mean, technically he's alchemized and he keeps it for pretty much forever. You have to get the alchemist on this guy. It's pretty much a necessity for that extra range right there, guys. Never would have thought that it was a good idea to alchemize one of these guys. All right, all right. I got a, I got a weird question for you. All right, what happens if I put like a ninja? Oh, like right on the edge of his... Well, that's kind of weird. Can I not put it on the, the alchemist edge of his uh, power here? I wonder. It seems like it's going okay, uh, like when he's unalchemized. It looks like they don't allow you to put it on the edge here when he's alchemized. That's actually really smart of Ninja Kiwi, I guess, because I, I could be really annoyed if I accidentally like tried to space myself out as far as I could over here, and then my tower just got deleted or sold when the ice like went away for you know disappearing range here. It's going to go back and forth with that alchemist power. You know, when it's got the alchemist, it's up here. When it doesn't, it goes down to like here. So it's not a huge difference, but there definitely is a difference there. Now the next tower is definitely this glue storm right here. And this is where it gets interesting. Because what I want to do for you guys is I actually want to say, you know what? I'm a freaking lazy butthole of a human being. All right. I've got these things called sentry bots. And what these sentry bots do is they allow us to just say, hey, I don't want to press the abilities for my towers anymore. We're going to let them speak to their own. So we're going to say, hey, I'm going to press freeze and glue, and I want to see when does the cooldown come back? Uh, it seems like the ice comes back ridiculously quick, but they're not the same. So it'll be a little weird most of the time. They'll kind of uh, offset, of, offset each other, but not all the time. But either which way... They're just going to be constantly using abilities against the balloons. We kind of want to see, like, where we're going to get to at this point. Now, keep in mind that I do have $66,000 saved up, so if poop hits the fan, I'm going to buy more towers. But I want to see how far can I get with just this weird, weird, weird loadout of towers here. A glue and an ice are doing almost all of my pops right now with a random arcane spike. He's not even an archmage, and he's just demolishing these things. This is ridiculous. <laughs> it really is just constant... Freezy glue action all over the screen. It's it's straight up ridiculous at this point. All right, I feel like one thing that I am going to need is a little bit more Moe popping power. Now, if you got to decide what I want to get for that, uh, it realistically the best thing to get a map. But I feel like almost like I'm cheating if I do that, right? Am I cheating, or is this the new meta that we need to? Let's do the new meta. Let's do it, man. Screw cheating. We can put him right in front of my uh, wizard here. Let's get the mad going and uh, own everything. Let's do it. Let's make it happen. Oh my god, here he is. Now, I'll admit to you guys, this might be a little overwhelming for your little little baby brains over there. You might be thinking, how the heck is this even possible? How is this strategy hiding from me the entire history of the world here? It was, and I don't know how. I don't know what to tell you. Uh, what I am going to do here is I'm going to throw down the powerful darts. I like the powerful darts better than the uh, top path here for regular games for the mad, but against boss blues. I do like that top path a little better because you can aim a little bit better with your abilities, which is really where you're getting all the damage against boss blues. But this is a different game. Right now, all we want to do is go through as many Moebs or BFBs as we can, as quickly as we can, and see what we can do with this. All right. Now, I I think I might want to say that, that we are, might be unstoppable. Uh, how, how, could we po how could we possibly lose at this point? How? I mean... I'm not even aiming. I'm not even... I mean, I'm, I'm technically not microing because I've got sentry bots over in the corner there, but holy crap are we owning these guys. DDT's coming out here. No big deal. Reinforced mobs. No big deal. Reinforced BFBs. No big deal. I really want to see it round 98. That's my first round that I'm... Ooh, they are getting a little bit further this time. Oh, we actually have to aim with the mad. All right, 94. Our first round that was actually a smidge difficult. Okay. Fair enough. Fair enough. All right. I'll take it. I accept it. 95, though, against DDTs this time around. Let's see what we got. Uh, DDTs seem to be a non-issue for us, though, for whatever reason. Um, Mad just owns them too hard here. Oh, and we got an Etienne level 20 now. <laughs> I kind of forgot, right, when we reached level 20. Oh, wait, wait, whoa, 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 whoa. DDTs, they trying, man. They want to sneak through right there. Uh, don't forget our UCAB is also activatable, and even if Poop really, really, really did hit the fan, we've got our Mad ability. And I don't think nothing, nothing be sneaking through this Mad ability here. Uh, even even the 
the bad balloon, guys. All right, round 97. Reinforce, oh my god. With just a smidge of micro there. Absolutely smoked. And this is the real test for us. Round 98. Is this the most unstoppable strategy of all time right now? It sure does seem like it to me, guys. Ice glue combo. Now, I haven't even thrown in the other major player in this level right here. Oh, look at that. The mad not popping all the Moab class balloons. What is this play? What is going on here? Definitely not as OP for round 98 as I thought it would be. Having both the glue and the ice both supposedly smoking these things. All right, maybe our mad positioning's a little off. Maybe I should put a little bit further back, just kind of shoot through more things. But either which way, we do end up taking these guys down. Here's the here's the bad balloon. Let's just use our ability to finish him off. And <laughs> look at that. We kill 100 on like in like two seconds there. What the heck? And don't forget, we got sixty-two thousand dollars left over. That's not something to mess around with. So I'm just kind of curious. I have a feeling that this is actually not going to be a good late game gameplay strategy. But I'm a little curious just to kind of see how well that this would do kind of ba on its own. Because don't forget that that glue and that ice is used so much. Oh, here we go. Here we go with a UCAV. 102 already getting struggle issues here. Oh, baby. Oh, hot diggity dog. Hot diggity dog here. Let's use the mad ability on these. Oh, my gods. Oh, my goodness. It's pretty clear that against ceramics... They're, they're not an issue. You've got to pop the mob layers, though. And there's definitely a lot of ways to pop the mob layers, but I'm not sure what the best way for me currently is. I'd probably go for some sort of Sky Shredder or something like that if I really wanted to try to stay in this game here. But still, we're on 103 with this strategy right now, with $66,000 left over. That is beautiful. So if you guys enjoyed this kind of weird video, make sure you press that like button. Make sure you subscribe. And of course, have a super duper delicious day.